back at it again. Uh, Feeling Your Passion podcast, welcome back. Two of my favorite people on snow are here, Jay Manaberry and Blaine Matthews. <laughs> I've just wanted to use that button for a long time. <laughs> Glad we got it. Welcome back, Jay. You were on, like, I think, the first episode. Yeah, ever. literally the first. And then, Blaine, you jumped in during heydays, mm-hmm. and we haven't officially like had you on, have we? No, we did one at... Uh, no, you did that was with Sea Boys, I oh, think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In our studio. We did the Sea Boys one and we yeah. joined in on that deal. Well, so we get on. I don't think you've been officially like just an episode with you two. No. This is our own podcast. This is. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, guys. For those who do not know, Jay and Blaine are both professional snowmobilers, factory ski do riders, uh, professional hill climb racers, as well as backcountry riders with a long history on and off the track. Um, yeah, guys, you've been kicking ass the last few years and it's been fun to watch the progression, especially now if you guys want to fill everybody in. I know that by the time this comes out, the Jay and Blaine show will be kicking back into gear. What exactly does that ridiculous concept look like? Pretty much what your, <clears throat> your imagination, uh, <laughs> wherever your imagination takes you. Like it's, uh, the Jay and Blaine show is pretty unique. You know, we're, we're just us and that's what we want it to be and it's what it's going to stay. You know, we... We, we love what we do. We have a passion for it. And, uh, I mean, we're just out there to have fun. And ultimately, we want to capture that, you know, and, and allow people to see it, you know, our everyday lives, whether it be in the shop, in the parking lots, you know, obviously the riding, you know, mm-hmm. that's a big part of it. But there's so much more than just the riding. And, uh, you know, we, we love that part of it. That's what makes us such good friends is the stuff that's in between the actual riding, you know, the gnarly stuff, whatever it may be, the racing but uh, the behind the scenes is kind of what makes us us. Yeah, we feel like we have a lot of fun on and off the snow. You know, we try to make the most out of life, as does everyone, I hope. And we just want to bring you along for that ride and uh, try to entertain you a little bit. And I if def- we can help you at times with tips and tricks or just a laugh, that's our goal. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are good at the laughs. I definitely <laughs> laugh more than... I love our team, but I laugh the hardest with you guys. I've had some of the funniest moments. Yeah. Um, there's, there's been this evolution of this accent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What the accent? <laughs> <laughs> I think it kind of originated in Canada with you, Jay, and Riley Suhan. Yeah, that's well, it really originated for me with Blaine. And then I, oh, t- really? I took it to Canada, and Riley picked up on it right away. Yeah. So I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to run with this. And yeah, <laughs> Blaine and I, like, we watched Borat together probably <laughs> when it came out. And we, <laughs> of course, had to, like, talk it, like it that. It started as Borat, now it's kind of its own thing. Yeah, we've mixed in, mixed in some French, some, <laughs> some like, I don't even everything. know, like, some Bruno, maybe, some Austrian. <laughs> My favorite part is that it's, like, contagious. When people are around you guys... I, I, even like Stephen Clark, he starts talking like, and Stephen's Scottish, so he just <laughs> butchers it. Yeah. But everybody around you starts talking like that. I know, like Borch, every every rider we've ever been around starts throwing it out there, even and you'll Diener. hear it. Yeah, you'll hear it all yeah. of a sudden. You're like, oh, they're getting converted. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take long. Like someone will come to the shop and we're working on stuff, and we don't even realize we're doing. I know it it's almost time. your normal voice. Yeah, now. like, and then all of a sudden someone says something. That normally wouldn't say it in the accent we do, and it like catches you off guard, and you're like, "What happened to them? Are they okay?" <laughs> did we? Really and then know? they're looking at you like, "What did you do to me?" <laughs> but like it's just, it's just like a super fast spreading infection, but it's a good infection to have. <laughs> There's no cure either. <laughs> <laughs> there it was there. I heard it a little bit. <laughs> There's no cure. You'll never get out. <laughs> Oh god, that's funny. It's uh, fun. It's like this a song that gets stuck in your head, which that's kind of more annoying. This is fun. Dude, I walked in the door and it was the first thing I said. I was like, "Hello gypsies." Yeah. Yep. Right off the bat. It it just I think something would feel off if you guys were like, "What's up, dude?" Yeah. Like, you feel okay? How is your day today? Yeah, I'd be <laughs> like, "Nah, you're not well now, Blaine." <laughs> it's it's really tough when we're like in a professional setting, so yeah. like in a meeting with like skidoo engineers. And at the end of the meeting, we realized we talked like Borat the entire meeting. 
But I think he's kind of slowly doing it right now. (laughs) I can hear it going into it. (laughs) Those guys, like, that's just us to them, I guess. They don't ever say anything about it. They don't look at us funny anymore. They used to, but (laughs) it happened a lot on this this past four days. We were up in Quebec at the BRP headquarters in Valcourt. There, (laughs) you know, it was it wasn't a totally serious trip. You know, there was some business mixed in with some fun, but like. We had a few meetings that were pretty serious, and we'd start them off serious, and then we'd get comfortable, and we'd start talking like this, <laughs> like saying, we want to try this on snowmobile, and we're like, oh, uh, but they're like, yeah, sure. Do, do you think with the French accent, they ever thought you were mocking them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think, nothing ever came of it, but yeah. you have to think that. <laughs> yeah, because it kind of could have a little bit of a French tone to it. Yeah. Especially when we're in Quebec yeah like because we everything up there is they in don't French. really speak English no. either they hate speaking like, English everything's in French some places you'll see French and then you'll see a uh, American under it I guess. English English yeah that's it <laughs> <Sure>. English <laughs> but uh like any restaurant you go to you know they speak French and a lot of like the waitresses and stuff like waiters like they they know English. Some of them not so well. They just don't want to speak it. No, it's like a pride thing. Over yeah, there. they yes. want to preserve the yeah. French um, language in Quebec for sure. Did you ever get in a situation you had to use a translator to communicate with somebody at all? Like you couldn't order something or? No, usually we have people with us from oh, yeah. from Skidoo that can help us with that. It'd be pretty scary if we were alone in yeah. Quebec. Yeah. Like, not scary, but yeah, we wouldn't get yeah. far. <laughs> <laughs> help. <laughs> Road signs and stuff. It's. Yeah, but it, yeah. it's funny, like, yeah, even every, like, there was some times where it was just him and I, like, after we were done for the day, we'd go eat, and he'd roll into, like, a restaurant, and they're, you know, bonjour, and they say whatever they would say, and we just kind of look at each other, because we're like, uh, no, I do what well, he said. Well, then, like, when I've been in Sweden, I've learned a few words here and there, and if you reply in their language, then they think you know it. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah, bonjour, you're like... Bonjour. Yeah, and then they start rattling something off. You're like, no, you know, like, no, no. Too far, too far. So I only I, know that. I just panic in Sweden and go, hello, also, <laughs> like, or good morning, something, like, clearly English. Yeah. Because otherwise, I got to, like, have that awkward, they, they rattle off a whole sentence to you, and I'm like, nah, English, please. Nah. <laughs> and they yeah. rattle it off so fast. Yeah. You're just like, whoa. Slow That's a, down. one of the hardest languages to learn, I think, too. It is, yeah, man. And... But, Especially in Quebec, that French is different from like yeah. uh, France European French, French, <laughs> French fries. <laughs> so it's called Quebecois, oh. is like the dialect. So, and they say it's even like harder to learn than, yeah. you know, typical. There's probably so much French. slang at that oh, point yeah. that developed into it. Yeah. There's so many words they use that aren't even in like the French dictionary. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, that's what's cool about it. And again, look at us when we speak English. We have yeah. Dwayne and Jay Quaw. <laughs> <laughs> True. I think a lot of people don't under, understand us. Too. <laughs> it's, it's terrible, but it's good. Um, so working, obviously the, the biggest goal as a snowmobiler is to have an OEM deal. Mm-hmm. No matter what manufacturer it is, like there's a lot of support that comes from that. Share what you can. I know there's a lot of top secret stuff, which, which is cool. It's rad that you're involved in top secret stuff, but... When you go to something like that and you sit down with engineers, whoever, I mean, it sounds like they're genuinely interested in what you guys have to say. I mean, what type of stuff are you working on, like, two, three years down the pipeline? Are you trying to refine current things? Like, what what do they want to hear from you guys? Uh, A little bit of both. It's mainly looking into the future because with production, like, the next year's production, it's already too late to change things. It happens... Yeah. Way beforehand. Way oh, yeah. They're, way like on, they're like brainstorming 2030. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of those guys. And you'd, you'd think like skis, for example, like, well, why don't you just put these skis on the free ride next year? Yeah. At, like, it's not that easy. Right. For whatever reason. I mean, you get the bigger picture when you go and see the factory <clears throat> and how how big the process is and how involved and in-depth all, it, all of it is. And then you kind of get like, oh, yeah, you can't just throw a wrench into things and change yeah. little, even the little cycles things. are so dialed. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. Oh, man. The process is that, is the manufacturing plant at the same building there? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's like pretty much all right there. I mean, there's one or two buildings that are a block or two away, but 
like the race shop, the factory, you know, assembly line, yeah. you know, a bunch of the offices. It, it's pretty much one building. Is it it's one of those huge. deals where, is it kind of smaller town or? Is it's it, tiny town, but. But everybody works there. Everybody right? That's how works it is of Cat, Polaris, you know, yeah. it's like that employs the whole town. Yeah. And you could, it could probably be more efficient or it, easier to put, move it to like a big city, you know, where there's a bunch of shipping resources yeah. and whatnot. But it started in Valcourt. Yeah. Back in the early 1900s, really. Yeah. And the they, BRP's done all kinds of stuff before snowmobiles. Yeah. Well, I, they did uh, like passenger vehicles on yeah. snow. Like uh, Snowcats. Yeah. And uh, Sherpa, like Sherpa type yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then obviously the on road side and the dirt side way back when was still in development. But in the, the founder's will, he wrote that. Um, never take it out of Valcor. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And never stop. He never wants the doors closed. Yeah. That was, that was, yeah. And we learned a lot of that at the museum. That's something that people need to go see. Is Dude, the all of the OEMs have such rad museums. Like, yeah. I had no idea. Like I knew there was a lot of history with BRP and the stuff in the behind the scenes, but like what that guy started, he dabbled in so many things. Yeah. Like, like tram railroad cars, you know? Yeah. Like, they made cars for that and stuff too up there, like for the Olympics in like the seventies and the 70s. war, yeah, World War yeah. Two. Like they he were, developed vehicles and stuff for them. I, so. I like I said, I I ride Polaris. I, I'll never ride anything else. I love them, right? But I, it's a level playing field. If these yeah. other brands aren't putting out something cooler, bigger, and better, we're never going to have any advancement in the technology. Mm-hmm. And the thing that BRP put out that I loved, it was just last year, this year, was the 20th anniversary of the Rev, that video. Yeah. They showed a lot of stuff of like the museum and in headquarters yeah. there. But like this chassis right behind us, what I'm riding, what you guys are riding, what cat riders are riding, like wouldn't exist. Granted, I'm sure somebody would have figured out eventually, but right. this was the pivotal moment for rider forward position and brought sleds to where they are today. Yeah. And the craziest thing is like, it was only 20 years ago. Yeah. Like things have gone a long way in the last twenty years. Yeah, it's it's a compounding thing at this point. The development um, f- from this behind us, from the rev. Yeah, like yeah. It, it, it was like a light bulb moment, and then all of a sudden it went from here to here. Yeah, and now it's. I it's thought it was crazy. interesting that video how the guy whoever that engineer is, you guys might know him, the one who was on board with the rev. Um, he's in the whole little. 20th anniversary yeah video. yeah i know they i can't remember his name he but. took it something as simple as he's looking at street bikes and going yep. like look at the positioning on these guys and the the ergonomics of it and then there was that sketch they showed of like a street bike next to the prototype sketching of that and trying to get body positioning kind of yeah. similar and rider mm-hmm. forward and all of that and he did it like kind of after hours because his boss at the time you know was wanting him to work on stuff they'd been developing at the moment and he'd kind of did that on the side, yeah. you know, and and then he kind of completed it and was like, look what I got. I think this could work. And they weren't so sure. Um, and then finally they, like, built something similar to that first drawing. Yeah. It was kind of a wild drawing. And it was like, holy cow. And they just boomed down that path they went. Even though it was only 20 years ago, it's also, like, hard to believe it took that long to get to that <laughs> point. Yeah. Because you go 20 years back in sleds before this rider forward, they were Dog shit. Yeah, the yeah. year before the rev, every manufacturer had just a, arms and just a freaking wheelbarrow full of rocks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could crawl in. It's like an old box Chevy. You could crawl in and work on it. Yeah. The engine bay was massive. Like It's just like a couch with skis and a track. But at yeah. the same time, like Ducati is making these incredible sports bikes. Yeah. It's kind of like, man, I'm surprised it took this long for this it industry was, to figure it out. Thank like, God they did. Yeah. <laughs> you look at like the 2003, like in the museum. And it's the Rev. And then you go look at the 1983 yeah. sleds. And, like, the gap there up leading up to that Rev, things were progressing and changing, but not so drastic. No. And then, bam, the Rev. But then you look at the Rev to now. Yeah. And, like, yeah, it's still the Rev platform. But, like, the technology, that that's what really changed in the last 20 years. Maybe the last 10 specifically is – the technology they got involved. Yeah, with eighty three to like ninety three, like was pretty much the same level of capability on yeah. sleds. Yeah, damn for ten near. years straight. It's now crazy. you go back ten years. Let's see, it's twenty three. You go back, you'd be riding a thirteen 
Pro, a 13 XM. XM. Um, they sound, they sound it, miserable to ride. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, 83 to 93, it was like, whatever. It's not really going to make that big of a difference. Really makes you appreciate, you know, what these engineers do. Yeah. I was going to take a jab at Cat. You go back to 13 and Cat, you're still riding the same <laughs> chassis. <but. laughs> hey, they finally got a new one. Yeah. yeah. And some big news coming. So hopefully yeah. it's, it's good. It, and the market needs that. You know, like I say, it's like you said, the, the level playing field, all these manufacturers just trying to do this, um, stay above each other is, is what we need because it keeps the sport alive, keeps people involved, keeps new yeah. people coming in. And and that's that's what, what we need. So Speaking of Cat and their new – news mm -hmm. at heydays what do you Big what do news. you think i mean it's gonna be good let's take a guess and see if we're right um i'm definitely it's got to be a big motor i'm guessing so here's my thought everybody's done 850s i wonder if for them to get back in the market they gotta up the cc obviously polaris has a 900 they either gotta do like a middle ground like an 860 or they mm -hmm. need to do some form of an 800 turbo that puts out comparable numbers to the, all the 850 turbos out there. Yeah. Well, my thoughts are going back to their, like, 03, 04, 900 routes. Yeah. You know, the King Cat and the 1M. Yeah. That they and a or turbo. a supercharger. Because, you know, S Speedworks work they're really di close. They're pretty dialed. Yeah, they, yeah. When you think of Cat and Boost, it's a supercharger. Yeah. So... It'd be cool. I mean, I hope nothing but the best for all of them. Like yeah. I said, I just, yeah. that's the reason we're able to ride cooler versions of the brands we love every single year is because the others keep pushing each other. Yeah. Yep. And like, even in my opinion, when Polaris or Cat comes out with something better than the Skidoo, I'm secretly like, yes. Now we're going to come that out means, with something cool. Like right away, I know the engineers are yeah. saying, Tabernacle, we have to <laughs> one up them. <laughs> and then whether they want to or not, they're going to have to. Yeah. And that just means like more more work for us. Well, Skidoo started the whole factory boost uh, kind of back and forth. Battle, yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, I'm like, oh, man, because I rode one when yeah, it first came out. Like, That's this sweet. is sweet. And they are mixing gas, doing all aftermarket turbo stuff. Right. Oh, yeah. And then Polaris came out with one, and then now Ski Doo comes out with a new, their new chassis, the Gen 5, and ups their boost and all this stuff. And just, but back and forth is so fun. It makes yeah. anticipation pretty wild and fun, too. Like, you know, you're right. You like the, the factory turbo come out, and we were just like mind blowing. Like, this is the coolest thing ever. You know, then Polaris comes out one, you know, and it's like, all right, now they both have them. So then they started turning them up. Yeah. You know, now it's just, it just gets better every year. So you're real anxious every year to see when you get a new sled. Like, I got a bone to pick, though. How about the guys still who are so removed and to go, oh, it's just new colors this year. And, oh, they, they changed uh, the rear shock option or something, whatever. And it's just a new track on it. Yeah. I'm like, dude, if you knew what it took to put out – completely new motor everything the patents the, the money mo the money yeah. the molds like making plastic molds like even side panels when yeah. you're changing chassis huge. is insane i remember at one time when i used to when i was in college i used to help cna and shoot some stuff with them and they said to make like a new ski mold it was like 150 to 200 grand yeah oh so yeah. like they got their tried and true ones that have paid for themselves but to just completely introduce a brand new ski it was Bare minimum, you're starting at 200 grand and just getting the mold. Right, that's jumping in balls deep. It's before you just one item on the sled. A giant innovate or a giant um, investment that you don't know if it's going to pay off or not. And yeah. like it's a long term thing. Yeah, and a lot of ruffling feathers. So I'm like, yeah, stickers and paint are the cheapest way to keep <laughs> for a couple years at least. Yeah, give people other options. Like, but we got to be thankful for the little upgrades that we do get year to year, yeah. and then. Which I feel like we always get something sweet every year. They're yeah. never really the same. I feel, yeah. I feel like the guys that really, really ride appreciate them because it's potentially a small refinement. Like, what was it a couple of years ago? Something like, maybe it was Polaris, maybe it was Skidoo, both of them actually. It was like a new brake lever. Yeah. yeah. People were like, oh my God, it's just a freaking new brake lever. But if you like are an active, active rider, you're like, this is rad. This, this makes is a it great a better little, experience. Yeah. yeah. And people, like, that's the thing, like, just stuff like that, you know, they don't appreciate, like, say, like, a shock change or, a, you know, a drop bracket change location or somewhere. Something super little 
And people, yeah, they're like, oh, we wanted to see something, you know, crazy. You know, it's like every, a lot of people expect, like, a rev change every yeah. year. And it's like, no, they can't do that. But, like, a shock change, you know, like, they move a bolt mounting, you know, a half an inch. And people are mad at the world over it because it's... But then you're out climbing your buddy on the old one. And yeah, it's like, and it's like that one little thing can make so much difference. And that's just the engineering side of it. Like, you know, it just kind of goes over a lot of people's head because they're they're not riding every day like we are so we notice these little tiny changes a lot you know guys like us yeah. and i mean at the end of the day we're just lucky to be able to do what we do I'm like we got factory turbos on pump gas with a warranty what more do you want right yeah. now and a three inch track <laughs> yeah. with 100 mile an hour track speed and <laughs> yeah it's getting you everywhere you need to go and shouldn't exactly right. yeah and like you can send it off a hundred foot cliff and be fine and yeah like it's just <laughs> i mean you can but <laughs> We don't advise that for everybody. <laughs> closed course only. Yeah. Professional riders on closed course. <laughs> yeah, if you awesome. attempt it, film it. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell us you heard about it from yeah. us. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, on that topic right there, right behind us, you guys, this year at Jackson, it was pretty cool. You got yeah. to build. Because the Rev, 20 years now, became vintage, which is a weird sentence to say. It oh, is, man. Yeah. So the first time rider forward position has become eligible in the vintage class it's yeah wild concept yeah it's wild for a second but then we realized that we were able to do that and actually have one and build one and race it and yeah immediately we we're like oh yeah it's game on so what this thing start as i know there's a lot of us that love old race mods i kind of want to hear play by play on what this thing has become it started as a 03 x or a mxz rs is that the yeah, right? it, was a, it was a 440 snow cross. 440 where, snow oh, cross. Oh, it was. Yeah, yeah. like mint, like yeah. non beaver tail. Yeah. Um, like the sleds they raced back in the in 03. Um, it was trail converted, so it had the big tank, mm -hmm. single pipe, uh, but it came with the mod kit, twin pipes, the head, um, some other things to make it mod. And not only mod kit, it was a factory skidoo mod kit. Like you would get with from the, the race shop. With the factory pipes and yeah. everything, yeah. And yeah. the CDI and Those stuff. Those are hard to come by. Yeah. It had like the the manual, um, you know, at the time, it, you know, says extremely confidential. Like yeah. It was the race manual from O3. Where'd you find this thing? Uh, marketplace. Like around In here? Wisconsin. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I was going to say, there's no way you found one out here. No, I was searching high and low every day for, for one. And, yeah, uh, that's me right now. Couldn't believe it when I came across it and instantly messaged the guy and sent him a deposit. Yeah. And then it was figuring out how to get it out here. Luckily, I had a buddy, Mark, shout out to Mark for bringing it out here. He said, yeah, dude, I live right close to there. I'll go check it out, do a compression test, make sure it's all good. Uh, give the guy the money so we can just get the deal done. And yeah. I'm coming out in two weeks. I was like, fuck yeah. And there's kind of <laughs> another funny side to that. We actually have another 03 Rev that was our actual sled we were going to use for this. Um, is that the one you filmed with? <clears throat> yeah. Okay, yeah, that's why Steven. I was confused. I didn't realize this was a right. actual right. Snowcross Rev. Yeah. So that, I knew you had like a consumer Rev chassis. Yeah. A, uh, what was it? Like it was a Summit. Yeah. The or, orange or, hood, wasn't it? Was, it or? I it's hard to tell because it was it wasn't stock, so like there was some things done to it. Yeah. But it actually come from the place where I work here. My boss had it really here in Star Valley, and uh, I just traded him some hours for it, <laughs> <laughs> and it ended up being our parts sled. Now oh, but, nice. um, it was pretty funny. We yeah. uh, you know we had a a timeline essentially because this whole thing was kind of a marketing project, you know, from Haydays to Jackson and. So at Heydays last year, we shopped for a bunch of parts for our Rev because we knew we had that first one from his boss. So we're like, okay, we need to find a bunch of mod parts because we had nothing. We had the snowmobile yeah. and ran, which was a big plus for us, but we didn't know what we were getting into. And like race season kind of got carried away for us, you know, a lot of things going on and they just kind of got put on the back burners um, and we really weren't working on it. And then we were getting within like a month of Jackson and we're like, man, we've got to get some parts for this thing. And cause <laughs> a Jackson's month. a month and uh, like, you know, and this we, project that we got to start in September. <laughs> yeah. And, and like we were going up against Steve Martin and Carl Kuster. And so we know they had their shit together yeah. because they raced that chassis that, when it was new. Yeah and, yeah. and like we knew Steve and his dad, Claire, and of course, Carl have, 
yeah. crap ton of parts. Yeah, Carl was with Blair Morgan Racing. Yeah. 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 He has the sled hanging in his... Well, Martin was too. Didn't Martin yeah. race all Morgans? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if it was Morgan, but... Factory Warner. Warner. He was Warner racing, yeah. yeah. Big teams. Still a, a national snowcross champion. Like, yeah. I mean, those dudes lived that era in their prime. And then it was Jay and I of like, we have a Rev snowmobile. Stock, <laughs> yeah. Very stock with a hand, quite a few miles on it. Help. Help. And, and then, yeah, we were, the whole time, like Jay was doing a lot of surfing. I was looking a little bit. We were still kind of in the back of our mind. Like, it would be cool to find something a little closer to being ready as a sense of like, we just got to do a few things because we were so caught up in our current sleds trying to get those ready for jacks and get things right. And then this sled popped up, and it was like, yes, yes, we have to do that. And because it came with the mod kit, it was everything we needed. The sled was in way better shape. It was going to be a fair amount more work, I think, initially when we got it. But we rolled that sled in here, and, uh, again, it sat around for two weeks. We didn't <laughs> touch it. And then all of a sudden, it's like a week before Jackson, <laughs> and we, oh, no. <laughs> we, we pulled that thing in here. And in, was it four days, we turned it in from a factory snowcross sled to an 800 hill climb mod. Yeah. And, I mean, it, it was stripped down to the guts. And the first time we started it was the day we loaded it up to go to Jackson. We hadn't been able to tune it, test it, anything. We kind of were just doing some math, which I don't know if we're very good at math, <laughs> but we uh, took a shot in the dark. We get to Jackson. Thanks, Jamie. Qualifying was on. Uh, oh, thank you. Qualifying was on Thursday for the vintage class. So Thursday morning, first thing, we thought, man, we better go make sure it runs. You know, because we figured we could ride it well enough because we knew that sled was going to handle really well, that we could probably get it qualified, but we'd need a little more for the finals. Because right. like, the five guys in the finals would probably be pretty good too. And it was. It was Brett Turcott, Luke so, Rainey. So what were the motor parameters anything was a pure open mod like could you guys go whatever the hell you wanted the, to the chassis had to be 20 years or older okay just so, the chassis yeah. just the chassis so if we'd had a lot of time we had a lot of ideas but at the same time we wanted to keep it authentic yeah. you know we wanted the twin pipes like we could have put one of our new factory turbo setups in it that would be so rowdy we want to do it <laughs> but at the same time for that project we we're like man we need to keep it real in yeah. its era because we're obsessed with those sleds when we were young, yeah. for one. But we took it testing Thursday morning of Jackson, and uh, it kind of ran. We're like, all right, well, it's close. It's not where we need it to be, but I think it'll get by. And we qualified first and second. And then that night, we changed some clutching, some jetting, and took it up and tested it again up Cash Creek, just a quick little squirt. And it was quite a bit better. So then Friday, Friday morning, we qualified our current – our newer sleds, and then after afternoon was the finals for it, and we raced it, and we're first and second in the finals. But uh, now that it's built, we have all of this season, and we're going to use yeah, our time. You get a good baseline. To test it, and this thing is going to be absolutely nasty when we get so to Jackson. what motor is in it now? It's a 800 um, with it. Wh what's it built off, the 8? Is it a factory 8, or is it just like an HO motor from... Skidoo Whatever what? the snowcross engine started as, was it a power power tech? Yeah, they're power tech. Power tech. Just okay. It's not like a trig stat or anything like that. No, it's just, BRP. It's, it's got factory like, mod. It's yeah. a, you found an eight factory mod motor. It yeah. was in it. It was in it. Oh, like, they said it was a four forty. It came with the jugs already on it. Oh, it yeah, started no, he, out as a four forty. Got gotcha. you originally. Yeah, the original owner Dude, built it up to that. That is. Um, so we all that is yeah. hard to find. Yeah. yeah. Trust me. We changed the head because it had a race head, so we put the head on. Um, obviously, we gutted the sled out. Like We wanted it lightweight, too. We wanted it to look like a factory mod yeah. wood 20 years ago. It's got a 440 bottom end on it? I'm pretty sure it does, yeah. Jeez. Oh, so we uh, like we got rid of the gas tank. We converted the oil tank into our gas tank. Like It's so trick. Like We'll have to do a video on it, like a walkthrough video on it yeah. this winter when we get it really done how we want. But uh, it turned out so cool, way better than we imagined. I love, like, the factory kind of almost owed to that era of uh, rap, even yeah. clean, simple. Dude, I am obsessed with that era of mods because I grew up in Minnesota. Yeah. Didn't miss a Duluth National season opener for, oh, God, 15 years or so. Uh. And watched, was fortunate enough to watch Morgan and Hibbert battle 
numerous times. Sick. And those and were then, the days they were on 800 factory yeah, snow Yeah, so I, I got to watch the end of the 800 mod era, and then they were like, this is too dangerous, and they went to six mods. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which are still yeah, six fast. so yeah. sick. And then I, I worked the snow cross circuit for a while and got to go, like, the whole tour shooting media and was stage center or track center for, I don't know, probably 20, 30 pro open finals. And, dude, it was just... It stands out as like one of my favorite times in my career. Yeah. But and I'm at this age where you know how like some guys they get in their sixties, seventies and they start collecting like neon signs or stuff that they love, like vintage yeah. oil cans. Yeah. I'm like I've hit the point where I'm like looking for O three to O seven snow cross mods. Yeah. But I open this can of worms, so I'm on a bunch of these Facebook pages like Arty Cat Snow Pro, race sleds only, and like snow cross sleds only, all this stuff. There's a bunch of dudes like me doing the exact same thing, yeah. and the value of them has oh, gone man. up and up. And if anybody's listening and has an 04 to 07 cat, eight or six mod, I'm going to Heydays. I got to put this out before Heydays now just so I can get this out there. <laughs> <laughs> and I am on the hunt for them because, dude, they are whatever's left in existence, a couple of those years was like 100 built a year only. Yeah. yeah. And then the problem was that idiots like me, when we were 16, bought them, trail convert them, beat them to hell in the ditch. Right. And now that's still all it's in existence. So all these guys are trying to restore them. But yeah. this thing is like an ode to that. Obviously, I, I kind of look at it more and see almost like hill cross stuff than Rimshaw even. For sure. It kind of reminds me more of the hill cross era. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm jealous of this. No, we're pretty stoked that this is in our possession because same thing as you were just saying, like we're at that point in life where we want to collect and like relive that era somehow and, yeah. and just have one. And like we never, we raced twin pipes in that for a little bit, but never really got to have one of our own. And There's keep nothing one. better than full race gas oh, twins man. and stingers. Yeah. Ugh. They sound so good. You need a twin pipe button on there. Oh, dude, yeah. that's good. Yeah, I should. <laughs> I have my IQR mod. I should put a clip of that in there. Yes, that's the best sound, the um, best smell. There's this dude on that one of those pages who somewhere in Idaho, he won't, he's on all these pages and everybody keeps talking about him because he posts photos and videos of it every now and then. He won't say what he paid for it. He won't say where he got it from. He said somewhere in Idaho. He picked up a brand new 05 Cat 8 factory mod. Whoa. It had less than an hour on it. Like, the tunnel doesn't have a scratch on it. I mean, what? you open the hood, it's it's spotless. And I saw one that was, like, restored go for, like, nine grand or something like mm-hmm. that. And I can't only imagine what he paid for it. Oh, but that's who, cool. There, I think that year they said there was, like, 112 of them made. And somewhere, somebody kept, somehow ended up in Idaho, a Probably. brand new, I was thinking of Crapo. Kirk Hibbert. Or, or Kirk, yeah. Yeah, it could have been a Hibbert sled. An 05, 8 mod. I'll show you after this oh, pod. Yeah. It's, I'm like, dude, that those is so the sick. find of the century. Yeah. You just don't, you just don't see those anymore. But yeah, that's, we're obsessed with it. I mean, we, like now that we built this one, I bet we built a, <clears throat> a couple more, you know. Like, you guys just quit <laughs> racing new stuff. <laughs> He's got a bunch of 03 to 07 mods. <laughs> and that was twist my arm. <laughs> yeah, twist us. Because what we were really impressed about it, like Jackson qualifying, was how well this sled worked in yeah. the bottom. Like it blew our mind. Like we were in the same times as we were on our new sleds yeah. to the catwalk. I feel bad for Martin. <laughs> well, we don't. <laughs> we told him. <laughs> that thing was sick. And it then was, yeah. Snap that skid right in half. Yeah. Carbon rails. It helped our case a lot. <laughs> yeah, I because bet. everybody was doubting us that Do we didn't think know how his to build was faster it. if it were had a normal skid in it. Oh yeah, like they would had that built for what two months, two or three months. Yeah, like and Claire Martin had been tuning on that thing. Like it was dialed yeah. and it sounded so good. You know where ours was like the week of Jackson. We had the motor back in it. You know and tested it <laughs> at the race, but it was unfortunate for him. Like. There's going to be a rematch this year. Yeah. There's round two coming, and that's why we want to get our sled even better because we know they're not going to come with carbon fiber rails to Jackson this year. And uh, Cooster will be be on the sled too. He'll probably bring something nasty, you know, because last year he was dealing with an injury, so he couldn't race. Yeah. So I think I think it'll be like a kind of a whole new new event, really, and it's not going to be like it is last year. And I think the class overall, that vintage class, is going to be twice as big as it was last year. Yeah. Yeah, I think Cooster had, because I delivered the motor to him, because he had a 
the thousand crank shop that they used in Hillcross. <laughs> <sighs> I tw- wanted so bad to just make that thing go missing. Yeah. But thousand cc crank shop full race motor that they used back in yeah. Hillcross. Dude, I Next hope games. others get into it because next year come 04 you got the new version new i shouldn't say new 03 0203 cat had like the fire cat like almost an f7 same chassis mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then 04 they went to more of like the, the snow pro the snow pro race blend of the consumer sled so that that'll be an option now if like like a tapio or somebody wanted to join it and then come yeah. 05 you get the iqr in the mix yeah there was a lot of sick sleds of, yeah. of those IQR, the bullfrog or yeah. whatever. Yeah, I think 05 could be a really cool year if other guys, if you got like Thomas Brothers on board or something. I know Andy's itching to get in on it. I know he's looking for a sled just for this year already. And, yeah. and a lot of others there, you know, are like, we can't miss out on the again. And you talk to Snow Devils at Jackson, like that's their main worry right now is how to manage the vintage class because it was already like 22 guys in it last year. In, like, their amateur class, you know, had, like, 13 to 15, you know, they're... They got more guys in vintage. Yeah, oh, way yeah. more than their other local amateur classes. Yeah. And so, they're... And they love it, because it's a crowd seller. People love to come see these old Just nostalgic mods. for them. Yeah. 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 So, I'm excited to see what shows up to Jackson this year. I think it's going to be pretty nasty. Because, um, yeah, you know, like, Turcotte, he'll probably be back with it. Yeah. You know, Brant. You know, he was trying to yeah. get in last year. He was just missed entries because apparently he can't read. <laughs> Chris, don't miss entries this yeah. year. <laughs> we want to see you at Jackson. So there's a lot of guys, I think, like it kind of created a hype last year. And I think it's going to get better and better every year. Yeah. It's, it's going to be a deal where it's like an all-day race. Yeah. Like it's going to be. But you look at all these other circuits, ovals, all these, you know, different things. Like, they're huge, mm-hmm. you know, like there's that oval circuit runs around and I mean, it's way bigger than like the current new sleds, which isn't good for say our markets, but most of these guys at the same time have a new sled because yeah. they want to go mountain riding. We're not taking this mountain riding every right. day, you know, it's, it's got a gallon and like a quarter tank of fuel. It runs so. on what, C16 or 14? Um, actually, we don't have it on much. Um, these sleds, surprisingly, you know, it's like on a 110 blend. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But. I was just actually did a podcast with Butch and Ken Butch and he was he ran some amateur stuff yeah. um Rimshaw. We're talking about how rad actual like you go to Afton, you go to Jackson, those are gnarly hills. Mm-hmm. And Jay, you've been racing Hard Enduro and you watch the US Hard Enduro recaps. Mm-hmm. If they could capture it like that, like I love Rimshaw, I know it's kind of a hot topic. It, obviously, dollar signs mean everything in this in these events. But if they could get somebody to fund something and start capturing it in a way that really captures how gnarly it is, I think a shitload of people would be interested. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's just yeah. getting that, you know, I, I keep saying, like, all you need is one of these farmers that are ranchers out here that's sitting on $100 million worth of land to just toss a, a million bucks towards Rimshaw or something that loves snowmobiling. Yeah. And it would change the sport. It would. Huge, like, yeah. it is worthy of, if you could live stream it really well, full HD, it is worthy of, like, almost a Red Bull-like event, I yeah. think. If you got the right cameras up there, right lenses, right angles, some of those, I mean, it is nasty. Like, it how is. they capture Erzberg, those hill climbs, all that stuff. It's kind of on that level in snowmobiling at some of the events. Yeah, yes. It's so any of you guys that just got money to blow in your pocket, um, feel free to sponsor Rimshaw and get a massive media series going. Are you gonna invest or not? <laughs> <laughs> it would be cool, man. I'm all for it. I just yeah, I think it's a missing link for that sport to really skyrocket. It, it is. is. There's a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. Bottom line. Yeah. We keep and we talk about it probably daily, you know, when we're together about man, what just trying to find an idea because Rimshaw is trying to, but they, it's just, it's a money thing, obviously. Totally. Right? Like, but that's, I think there's a disconnect in that thought of if we can just sacrifice somehow or find the right connection, you know, to take that first leap of faith. It's like the same one that making a new mold. Like, yeah, the initial investment yeah. is going to sting, but the return, do it right. Yeah. Return is going to just blow it out of water. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh the U.S. Hard Enduro said they had double the entries in amateur classes after the series. Really? Wow. Just so many new eyes on it and kids. And they, they focused, they 
in each race recap, they focus a section of time on the video on the amateurs, That's which so is cool. just carnage, and everybody loves yeah. that. Yeah. But all these kids are like, oh, I could do this. I want to sign up, and all of a sudden, like Silver Mountain sold out in no time, 500 racers. Yeah. Before you could, there was the first two years I did it, you could like walk up and register the same day. That's yeah. crazy. Now it's just sold out like that. Well, and just the this pure spectator. Yeah variable of it you know i'm sure since they've done that series they have so many more eyes on it just yeah. to watch it you know and then the the actual participation of it has grown but mm -hmm. like i watch i race silver for fun but like i'll watch the rest of the series for yeah, entertainment that <laughs> silver go for you Jay. i broke my brake lever off <laughs> dude then ate shit the clip then in the quit. episode if you guys haven't watched it, it's on our channel is so damn funny. <laughs> he it's grabs gnarly, a handful man. of front brake and you go right over the bars. <laughs> it's gnarly. Blaine, you, that could be you, but you thought track riding was cooler. Hey, I'm a moto guy. That's what I grew up doing. Mm, you're going to become a hard enduro guy. I know. I, I really do want to get into it. That maybe. seems like where Blaine would thrive. Yeah. Oh, I feel like I would injure myself, but. What? what? The 80 foot doubles aren't going to injure you? I feel comfortable there. But I don't know. It's it's something I really want to dabble in and, and get involved in because obviously, like in the valley here, you know, a lot of a lot of my friends, you know, that's what they do. Yeah, there's um, two of them right here. Yeah, I three know. of them. Tristan's Three. over there. Yeah. So you're the only one you, right now. If we were to go ride, you'd have nobody to ride with. I'll just do a <laughs> butt whip by myself. There's not even tracks here to ride that are cool. Whatever. There's lame tracks here. <laughs> How was that fun? Uh, anytime you're on a dirt bike, it's fun. Have you seen these mountains that are right here? Yeah, yeah I know. I know. Now it's something. An interrogation Everyone point. roast Blaine in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> quit riding tracks. I, you I live in the mountains. I'll never quit riding tracks because there's just something, like say, I grew up moto, you know, and that's, it's just in my blood. And it's been a long time since I've actually had a bike. Like 2010 was when I give up moto. I just was... I don't know. I was tired I can of tell because you bought the wrong one. It's been so long. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it used to be a 300. <laughs> uh, I was, you know, kind of tired of getting injuries, injured. So getting on the track seems like the fix. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just something I'd done day in and day out. And that's when I really got started in hill climb racing was yeah. when I got out of moto. It was just a change of pace. Sometimes like person needs that, I guess. But I did buy a bike in 2018, a 250 moto bike. And I put like, I think it was 18 or 19 hours on it. I didn't ride it much, but what I did, it was like, I was like, oh man, I kind of missed this. I was going to buy one every year after that, and I didn't. So this year, I went and bought one. Andy Thomas and I had kind of talked a little bit this spring, and we're like, dude, we should go race some moto again. So we went down to Carl's and bought two KTMs, and uh, we've actually went a lot this <laughs> summer. It's been really good. <laughs> the, <laughs> the, the, the main reason I did it was, and, and I know it's not an argument, but to try and stay in shape, you know, and whatnot and be ready for the winter. You but I, hardened her? I know, I know that's not an argument. It's like snowmobiling, but like harder. When, harder, I, when yeah. I walked into the shop, I had the wrong bike, a starting <laughs> gate on my mind and a bunch of jumps and ruts. So, but I, I do want to get into enduro. I'm, I think next year I will buy a, a 300. Okay. I'm going to have both. You're going to race, you're going to get. Two months, maybe a month on a hard enduro bike, and you're signing up for silver. I'll do it. Yeah. Sign me up. There's no doubles. Make one. <laughs> Jump a rock or Double something. logs. Yeah. yeah, true. I did take my 250 because when I first got it home, I was, like, so eager to ride it. So at the house down there, Strawberry, I was like, well, I'm just going to go up the road here. And then I found a trail, and next thing you know, I'm up the trail a long ways. And I called Jay, and I'm like, man, like, this is, this is tough. I'm just trying to get up this... <laughs> Big hill. And it took me like an hour and a half <laughs> to get up this hill on my moto bike. Up something that we would go blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, on snowmobile? Yeah, no, on... Oh, on 300s. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he's know, probably it, got like 20 pounds of pressure in his... He's got too big of wheels. He's got air, yeah. hard tires, hard wrong tires. gearing. He was high, yeah. geared really high, and like it was like full pin, or you're just super slow. Was this a single track up Strawberry? I don't know. It was one I just turned left off the road. It's kind of like a not much of a trail, but kind of a trail. <laughs> and I got up into a bunch of shell rock. <laughs> and where I struggled was you can't stop when you want. No. Like, I'd try to stop, and I'd just slide down the mountain. You can't dig a ski in and set yourself. No. Yeah. Yeah, no. I called Jay. I'm like, dude, this is something else. But. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, okay. And I've taken my 110 up there a few times <laughs> to get some practice, too, so... Practice on the one. Well, time. it gets softened up to the enduro world, you know. Kind of get. It's gonna idea. be like a fifty at this elevation. 
dude, the one new one tens rip. That's what Tristan and I were noticing. We're like, I haven't ridden down here in a while. We rode bikes yesterday, and I'm like, this is what people think 300s are like that live here. Like, it's a significant loss in power compared to oh, riding at home. Yeah, they rip at home. Well, you know, us at silver, you notice how much different your bike runs. Yeah, yeah, but that's everything with this elevation. I'll get a 300 now that I don't have to jet it. Yeah, you're going to get a 300 now because we're just roasting you about yeah. it, and everybody else is going to agree with us. Looks like a charcoal. Right you're going to have a ball, dude. Trust me. I already have balls. <laughs> In your mouth. It's like... <laughs> at the motocross track. <laughs> How does it feel to take second over 30B at a local <laughs> RMX race? Uh, it, uh, yeah, you, the fun thing is it's like sledding. Like you can laugh and like you try to pass your buddy and you're going five miles an hour and you're bouncing bars yeah. and you're just like kicking each other and trying to find traction. And what lo- it, you're not running 20 minute moto where you are just in the zone and can't hear each other. Well, and the exploratory factor of it That's too, it. like you're in all this stuff. Yeah, you don't know what's coming in, next. Yeah. And the, like you can, the views are sick. The yeah. adventure the adventure side of it is what really We're just telling me. you you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you bought the wrong dirt bike. <laughs> we um, want to hang out with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. We want to hang out with you. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll kill one. Jay Blaine, what is uh, the Jay and Blaine show did how many episodes last winter? Like six-ish or so? Yeah, six yeah. or nine. What are, we li- <laughs> what are we lining up for this year? You know. Can't tell you. Yeah, we, we don't have like a, we do but don't have like a set schedule. Like, our goals are, and we've, and I think we learned a lot from last year. We did a lot of self stuff. You know, we had a lot of help from professionals, you know, like guys like, you know, Tristan and you and Steven and guys like that helping us. And, you know, Skidoo had some episodes that they would, you know, send, say, a crew out and, and mm-hmm. do some. But I think last year was a huge, just a learning year. You know, we got our feet wet and they're soaking wet still. So <laughs> we're excited for this winter. But our goal this winter is just to be on the snow as much as possible or whatever we're doing and just capture everything. And you guys both got the winters off now, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's your first time fully winter off? Um, no, I did it a few years ago. Um, you know, I, I worked well, I, when I was working for the same guy I am now a few years ago. We had the winters off, but I lived in Pinedale still, so there was still quite a bit of traveling. And now that I live in Star Valley, which is news to everybody, maybe, um welcome you know jay and i are close right now you know we're pretty much canyon neighbors here and uh it's gonna make life a lot easier for us in the winter yeah because then say if we do go travel somewhere it's not like we gotta go meet up we're just here and we rock and roll or we just ride out the doors and go meet so but yeah the the winter's off deal is is what's gonna make it nice for us yeah you know we can focus a lot on just riding you know practicing for racing everything you know it's gonna make us a better athlete i think and it's going to help our channel. Oh, yeah. And Blaine, we've officially signed you to the pro team. How have I not mentioned that yet? You guys probably, oh, yeah, that, that thing kind of blew up on social, so a lot of you guys saw it. But it was one of those things that feel bad, actually. I think we almost, <laughs> <laughs> we almost like, assumed you were on it and, like, <laughs> life caught up and we all got busy. And I was like, oh. Well, no. Blaine's I'm... technically an ambassador still. <laughs> <laughs> you still got a 15% off code. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. Free shipping. <laughs> no, it's... Uh... <laughs> Everybody gets free shipping, though. <laughs> it was it was cool to, you know, be officially part of the pro team. It's, uh, you know, it's again, people want goals, you know, set goals for yourself, and that's been a goal of mine. You know, Jay's been on it for a while now, and... And uh, with what we're doing, yeah, Jay's old news. Yeah, he is old news. He's, He's ten years deep on this. <laughs> yeah, where's your welcome post? We didn't have Instagram back. then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it I'm was sent through email to everybody. <laughs> I'm a shareholder. <laughs> but I'm excited. It's gonna. I mean, like I say, I don't think much is gonna change physically, obviously, because we're we're doing the same stuff. But uh, it was it was good. I'm excited. Yeah. You know, it's it's an honor. It's a special group to be part of. You know, the 509 group's rad. You know, everybody we do have fun. Everybody yeah. on the team is so cool and has so much fun and best yeah. best gear out there too in my opinion. Yes, best looking sure. like honestly. Like if I weren't on the pro team, I'd buy this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's evolved a lot over it's the last few years. So good. Like it's been I, cool seeing the evolution of it. No good. complaints. It looks good. It's they list like they're a good group of people that are developing it. Yeah. They're right in Washington, you know, it's we use it because it's what works for us the best. Yeah. And obviously it's yeah, I say it looks good and yeah, 
and, and a cool company to be a part of yeah. that supports the industry, supports guys like us and potentially you out there. If you, you know, if you're an aspiring athlete, they'll take a look at you if you can offer, you know, mm -hmm. a part, a good partnership. And We're that's always on the rad. lookout. Yeah. yeah. I wish kind of the same to the same note of, uh, talk about the OEMs battling and pushing each other. Mm -hmm. I really wish like some of the other clothing manufacturers would start pumping out more media stuff. Yeah. I, <laughs> Not saying we're the only ones. Right. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff out there. I know Climb does some stuff. I know, like, there's things like, uh, like Boondock Nation and stuff like that. But I wish you'd see stuff like from FXR, Fly, yeah. or whoever. Well, that's just it. to keep more for the consumers, no matter what you wear, just right. more media coming into your feed. And then for us to all push each other too. Cause I don't know. I, I love watching competitor stuff and like kind of fuels the fire a bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the cool thing with 509 is it's not like, hey, guys, we got new gear coming. Let's go do a gear shoot, you know, so we can get it out for next year when it, when the time comes. Like, the cool thing with 509 is is we ride all the time within the group of 509, and it's not every day about the gear. It's like the camaraderie, the yeah. adventure. The experience. You know, the experience, like, you know, like, it makes, that's what's so special about what 509. That's like why I love fun. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like, you see a lot of other companies that do have pretty decent gear you know you don't see much of, of them on social media other than like we got something new coming and, mm -hmm. and, you know and it's just quick clips just for the gear and it's you know yeah we do we do that too but it's the fun adventurous yeah. experience we try to make sure i mean that's the goal it's pro team is a prestigious thing to be a part of like you guys are going to get features you're going to get random little social edits you're going to get announcements that are like catered to you like when we send out imagery when we launch gear we try to make sure it's like stuff of just you guys and individually you know you get photos of only yourself that makes yeah. sense not just a batch of photos that everybody else has posted and yeah it just i mean that's part of what it is you guys are going to get catered to and treated really well because we appreciate what you guys do in return and Even we i mean we appreciate it you know I, it's hard to even explain how much because it gives us opportunity you know, to do what we love. Builds a good resume for you. Everything, OEMs, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It helps everyone. It's a, we're all just a big family. We all yeah. got to help each other. Everyone. Otherwise, just otherwise we're all just riding snowmobiles in the mountains and high-fiving by ourselves. We're all just, we're like the rest of the world. It's <laughs> boring. <laughs> boring and <laughs> typical. And, 509 know. is not boring. Although, Jay, I am, I do question what your, uh, I know you work all summer. I do question how good you are at it because I feel like for the last three summers I've called you, you've been working on the same house. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. It's I'm still at Ben's. Yeah. It's 2020. I'm at Ben's 2021. Still working at Ben's 2022. Well, it's a compound. Yeah, I'm working at Ben's. <laughs> it's a compound. You should see it It's now. a giant yeah. house. Yeah. And it's a three-man team. I know. And there's no plans. <laughs> and there's a moto track. There's there. literally no plans. He goes off of top of his head, which is sick. But I don't know. <laughs> I just think it's funny. And Jay's just standing like back. This there one with a house has been a, a full time job for four years. <laughs> Off top Ben's head. Jay's like, I'll hammer it. <laughs> <laughs> Show oh. me where to nail. <laughs> no power cool tools. <laughs> yeah, really cool Amish place. style. <laughs> <laughs> Whittling your <laughs> milling the boards. The Amish would build that in like three days. Have you seen that video where the Amish move that whole building? Yeah. It's like 200 of them with like cross beams across the floor and they all pick it up and walk it down the street. Like ants. Yeah. That's insanity to me. Yeah. Well, I could say the same for you. Still working at 509. <laughs> still working at 509. Okay, that's different. You're still taking pictures. You're, <laughs> you're working a trade at the same damn property year after year. It's just impressive that it's not complete. That's how it happens down here. Yeah. Big houses, nice houses, custom takes a long time. Okay. With three people. I let it let it slide. You hooker. <laughs> <laughs> uh anything else before we wrap up, guys, that you got coming up here? I know last winter was like colossal here and it kind of yeah. spoils us. Like you think every winter was gonna be like that. But two winters ago, remember how bad we battled yeah. it? Yeah, it was abysmal. It was like late February, and it was like November snowpack. Hitting rocks still. Yeah. So. Last year was a special, special gift. And if the almanac is right, it, it's supposed to be a good winter this winter. I know. I just saw that came so, out. 
we're fingers crossed. Uh, everybody cross your fingers too, because uh, another winter like that, you know, it does so many things. Obviously, it gives you some of the best riding in the world all over the place. Mm-hmm. But it's good for the the sport. You know, yeah. it it's, keeps everybody involved, gets more people. So. I just I hope there's the same or more amount of snow in the mountains, but maybe a little less down low for like the deer and the elk. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. a real thing. Yeah, like, yeah. The, I thought you were gonna population. say you plowing snow. Well, that too. I ran out of places to put the shit. <laughs> it's like okay, I'm suffocating at my house, my poor driveway, my roof is collapsing. Remember that day we the came back from something? I can't remember what I was dropping you off for. And Jordy was here, and we couldn't even get up your driveway. <laughs> stuck. Yeah, we couldn't. Pissed. We couldn't get up your driveway, and you had to plow. It snowed like two feet. Yeah. Where were we? We barely made it home. It was just nuking. Was that coming after, back from Stevens after Ken's? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Life. In January, yeah. we came back, and it had snowed. We were gone for a like day, eight hours. Yeah. And we came back, and it was like it Nuked. snowed like eighteen inches. Yeah. Yeah, it was like I rode more pow days this year than like normal bluebird days. Yeah, mm-hmm. every day was like, I can't believe how deep it is. Yeah. Which was super sick. That but video you guys did with Ross when he was oh up here. That day we plowed like two <laughs> or three times. We plowed in the morning and it was just nuking. It was one of the deepest days I think I've ever rode. Yeah. It was nuts. We say that a few times, but that day oh. was unreal. Real. I'm so really. sad I wasn't here for it. We I, are too. I Where know. were you? <laughs> I don't know. Chasing around. There's 12 of you guys I got to take care of. So I uh, I'm, apologize I'm not here and I miss out on some stuff. But maybe we can send old Tristan after you. Yeah, he'll come Tristan, chase us. Jamie. If it's a winter like last winter, you just need to live here. Yeah. Because every day was just like, oh, this is new and crazy and cool. Like mm-hmm. the zones we got to ride last year. Yeah. Low snow pad, like, like lower elevation five, stuff yeah. that you. Five minutes from the house, you're stuck in just some absolute shithole. Yeah. And there's like cool cut co- or good coverage and makes cool features yeah. where usually it's just a bunch of moose food and yeah. rock. But now it's like pillows yeah. and tree lines. Right. So that was cool. Okay. I wish I could just taper out at my driveway so <laughs> <laughs> we could get in and out a little easier. did you have roof issues actually yeah dude yeah i know i know you had the snow blower up on the patio here plowing like five feet of snow <laughs> yeah. blaine and i tackled that it took a day <laughs> dude, like snow sh- shovels and <laughs> something else uh, between all the snowmobiles here good and problem the snow, it was yeah. wild here yeah yeah well well, thank you, boys. It's been fun. It's, uh, I can't believe at the time of recording this, heydays is like two and a half, three weeks. I already. Know. This summer's flown by. It has, yeah. Which means hopefully next time I'm sitting here in the shop, we just got done riding. Yeah, taking yep. our gear off after a great day mm-hmm. and planning for the next day and reviewing footage. And yep. hopefully everyone out there has an amazing winter again. And, you know, sleds are on time this year, at least the skidoos. We just verified that at the factory. They were shipping sleds out left and right. There's already sleds at the dealerships. I hope every OEM has a good year, too, yeah. for sure, for you guys, no matter what you ride. Yeah. Um, and hope everyone's st- safe and healthy and buffs up on their avalanche education. Totally. Like, totally. Huge. And we can't stress that enough. As jokingly as we are, don't mess around with avalanches yeah we get the information working in this industry and kind of thriving throughout it over the years we've seen way too many things go south and friends that we've lost that were all completely avoidable so yeah yeah, this is the time of the year september october to like go through your gear figure out what you need sign up for a class yeah go to a class it's it's a lot of people say oh i don't have the time but you do because your life is worth or somebody else's life more specifically like Mm -hmm. is worth the time to just you know, get educated and have the right gear. Totally. It's it, preseason. You have time. It makes every day way more enjoyable, less stressful, and everybody knows they're going home at the end of the every, day. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Well, guys, where can everybody find you? I can't, I think, Jay, what are you, Jay Manberry 411 Yeah. Yeah, on Instagram. On Instagram, and then the Jay and Blaine Show on YouTube, where uh, the summer was a little bit stagnant, but like David said, we're going to pick up here really soon, so subscribe and turn on the notifications so you get get the first glimpse at all those videos subscribe to 509 
Follow us on social. Yeah. Follow everyone on social. DMC Digital here. Tristan, (laughs) Trap Daddy 69. Junior junior Trapper. (laughs) Was it Blaine Matthews 230? Yep, 230. And then again, yeah, the J. Matthews with one T. Yeah, one T. Like math equation. Yeah. (laughs) We should start calling you that equation. I'm bad at math equation 231. (laughs) That's that's Blaine's new nickname in line. Blaine equation Matthews. (laughs) (laughs) The one line in one of the videos. 65 plus 55 or oh, yeah. 110%. Did you see the top comment on that video? <laughs> Somebody left a top comment and like, did the math and says, love how you guys always give it 110%. <laughs> and I didn't even know I was trying to make 100. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. Uh, well, thank you, boys. Um, yeah, if you guys are listening on YouTube, leave a comment for these guys. They'll dive into the link and respond to them. Uh, Apple and Spotify keep giving those five star reviews helps push it to more people and makes us uh, motivated to keep coming out here and doing things like this. Yeah. In the meantime, I don't remember when this is airing either. See you at Heydays or hope we saw you at Heydays <laughs> and maybe see you at a snow show. We got Denver snow show coming up first weekend of October, Salt Lake, the 12th, 13th ish in there yeah. following weekend. You guys going to be at either of those? Probably Salt Lake. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Boise. I'm going to I'm going to have this set up so maybe we'll do another one in the booth or something if you guys make it. Yeah, and then, yeah. yeah, we got Boise, we got the whole East Coast tour which Novi, Epping, um gosh, I don't even know what else. There's obviously Heydays, uh there's a ton of them over there, but we got the schedule online. So hopefully we see you guys somewhere this fall and then we're all hitting the snow. Yeah, maybe see you on the snow. Don't be a stranger. Yeah, do your snow dances. Be safe. We're excited to see you guys out there. Thank you, boys. Thank you. Later.